right. Okay, so we're going to uh, just dive into the material. Uh, we're going to start with uh, chapter two. Okay, chapter one is just like, this is a statistics book. You don't have to read it, okay? All right, chapter two, we start on just talking about data, all right? So this is uh, the introduction to uh, data and uh, just basically what statistics is based on, okay? So data is just information that, uh, that we're gathering and things like that, okay? Now, it's not just, uh, uh, when we're talking about data for statistics, we, uh, we're talking about kind of organized information. Now, there's information everywhere, but in data, we have, uh, well, when you learned how to write a paragraph in elementary school, okay, we talked about, you probably learned about the five W's and the H, right? You've got the who, the what, the where, the when, and the what. something else where these these informational aspects are less important but for a newspaper story you know you've got to cover this kind of these bits of information now when we c collect data our data ends up a lot of times in some kind of table okay and we've got columns of different things okay but the uh, the columns and things like this the data in our tables should answer uh, these, these same questions, okay? And at the very base, okay, all data tables should or will answer the who and the what, okay? The who and the what. This will be all data, okay? All right, and then uh, if you have background information about the data that you gathered, you'll probably have these other things the when, the where, the why, and the how, okay? So uh, let's uh, take, for example, um, uh, items and things like this, okay? So, uh, yeah, let's talk about uh, we'll have a made-up data set. Uh, the book talks about orders from Amazon and things like that, okay? So, in, uh, in our case, the uh, one thing that you've got to change is that who, when we're talking about data and the who, it's not necessarily people or, or beings or things like that. Uh, the who, this is each case or each line in a table. So just imagine a table of data and each case case or each line represents the who. So if I had uh, a table of orders here, okay, so I've got order number, okay, and uh, this is order number one, number two, number three. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, maybe uh, the uh, buyer. All right, so Mr. Chen orders something, okay. Mr. Smith, okay. Mrs. Who knows? Uh, Johnson. Okay, so we've got buyers and then the, uh, the items they order, okay. Textbook intro stats, and then um, what did Mr. Smith buy? A hat. Okay, movies. All right, and uh, Mr. 
Mrs. Johnson, she ordered magazine. Magazine. Okay. <laughs> Great. All right, movies. They bought whatever Inception and who cares? All right. All right. So in this case, what is the who? What is the who? The buyer and the item. The, it's the who item. is each order. Each order, okay? Each order is the who. All right, so this, this part gives uh, a lot of people, throws them for a loop because they think, oh, you're who, these are people, and things like that, okay? Because the thing is, technically, I could be like, oh, I, I can go back to the store and place another order, right? Okay, this, this is the same same person, same Mr. Chen, and now I'm gonna buy, uh, I don't know, you can buy a hat on Amazon, okay? Uh, and uh, the the who is each order. Each order is, uh, is placed, and this is what we're recording in the, in the table here, okay? Now, uh, the what, This is the information that we're collecting about each who, okay? This is the information we're collecting, in this case, about each order, but basically each line, uh, the information that we're collecting forms the what, okay? We're only showing two things in the of the what column, and that is the uh, the buyer and the items purchased. Okay, so the what in this case is the uh, buyer's name, and the items purchased. Okay. All right. Uh, so every um, every data table or every collection of data will have these two basic elements, the who's and the what, okay? And don't don't allow yourself to be confused because who generally has always meant a person or someone or something. Uh, in this case, it's always each line or each table, or each line in the table is a who, okay? All right, and you guys all know what when, where, why, and how mean, and, uh, and the book covers uh, what all of that is, and uh, and a lot of times uh, these are is uh, a lot of the the context for this table. Okay, so if you just saw this uh, table with no context, you might have an idea of what it's about. But really, um, what uh, uh, if you were provided this information, that would that would give you a better picture. Okay, so when you know this could be last year, this could be. Uh, you know, today's orders or things like that, okay, uh, the where, you know, it's coming from Amazon and the why, whatever reason why we want it, you know, we want to know about customer habits or something and how uh, taking it from Amazon servers, maybe, okay? Uh, and so that's, uh, that's all we're uh, talking about uh, when we uh, cover data. Are you guys feeling okay about this? Okay, so um, when we talk about these what columns, okay, there's different kinds of data that, uh, that we might see, okay? We've got, uh, uh, so the what, okay? these uh, uh, variables, okay? So we've got two kinds of variables, okay? So things that vary are, are variables, okay? So th they're, not the, they're not constants for everyone in the table. Uh, they are variables. 
Okay, so two types of data. Uh, one, we have categorical data. Categorical data. Okay. Or uh, maybe you'll see it as a categorical variable. kind that we see is uh, quantitative data. Quantitative data or variable. Okay. So technically, the variable, uh, the difference between the variable and the data, okay, the variable would be like basically the column heading in, uh, in your table, okay? And the data is the actual information that you've collected, okay? So uh, the variable can be thought of as the, uh, like the column heading. So things like the buyer, the item that they purchased, okay? And then the data, this is the, uh, uh, the actual Let's talk about categorical data and quantitative data. Okay. So categorical, uh, what do you see there? Like category. Okay. So categorical data means we've got categories. Okay. No surprise here. All right. So categories, basically, if it's not a number, not a quantity, it's going to be some sort of category, all right? So uh, it might be silly to think, it might feel weird to say um, the buyers are categories, okay? But um, but they are, okay? So the, the buyers, in this case, is a category. Also, the items are categories, okay? Categorical variables, okay? Categories, so these are uh, not quantities, Not quantities, but instead you will see labels, okay? Not quantities, but labels. Okay, so things things that are categorical variables, things like the buyer, okay? Because it's a, a label. Each The name is a, is a label to a, a person, okay? The items, also those are labels, okay? <coughs> any, any other things? Uh, a lot of other things could be uh, categories, so uh, maybe your uh, shirt size, okay? Small, medium, large. Size is a category, okay? If it's a uh, <coughs> small, medium, large, okay? Size could actually also be quantitative. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, if we're talking about uh, candies, okay, like, uh, I don't know, Jolly Ranchers, maybe the flavor. Flavor would be a categorical variable, okay. Uh, in a moment, we're going to look at slightly morbid data about the Titanic, okay, and uh, whether they survived or did not survive the accident um, is also a categorical variable, okay, because so, uh, because we're putting in them into categories, whether, uh, I guess, survived or died. Uh, also, categorical variable. Okay, these, are, these are categories. All right, quantitative data. Okay. Uh, quantitative data, on the other hand, uh, what do we see? Quantity, okay? So the key here is it represents a quantity, and so this is a lot, um, we will have quantities or uh, a number, sometimes it's a numeric variable, but uh, it means we've got quantity or how much of something do we have, okay? So, answer the question, how much or how many? Okay. Uh, uh, 
most numbers will be uh, <coughs> uh, quantitative variables. So things like uh, someone's height. Okay, height. How many inches tall is someone? Okay, quantitative variable. Okay, you can answer this person is 70 inches tall, this person is 65 inches. Okay, their weight. Weight is another categorical, or not categorical, quantitative variable. Okay, age, right? Okay, uh, and uh, you know, if we're talking about uh, like uh, for size, maybe uh, your like for, for men's pants, the uh, the size of the, the waist, that's how many inches around the, uh, the waist it's supposed to be, okay? So size, if it's measured in terms of inches, okay? Uh, what about your zip code? So let's, let's try things out. Zip code, is that categorical or quantitative? Categorical, categorical right? It's, it's a number, okay? But it's categorical because it's a label, okay? You can't, it doesn't tell you how much of a zip code you have, all right? You can't say, oh, I live in zip code 91001 and you live in zip code 17535. I have, I don't know, 7,000 more zip code points than you do, okay? That, <laughs> it, it doesn't make sense, okay? Um, you know, uh, but some, some variables are, are a little uh, strange. Uh, like uh, women's dress sizes, uh, their numbers, but they're also, uh, they're kind of like categories, right? You know, so you've got like a size four and a size 12 or something, okay? Uh, and it does make sense to say, oh, you know, man, I, I went up two dress sizes or something like that, okay? It, it does make sense to say something like that, but then at the same time, a size 12 is not three times larger than a size four or something like that, okay? It's, uh, so it's, it's, it's an odd, it's, it's a little bit weird, okay? Yeah, same with same with shoe sizes. These are we've we've put numbers to things that are really categories, okay? Um, but over here we've got things like weight. You know, somebody weighs, you know, a dog weighs ten pounds and another dog weighs twenty pounds. You can say this dog is twice as big as this dog, and that's that's a fine statement. Things like that, okay? Um, so you know, and the argument could be made for dress sizes and shoe sizes also being a quantitative variable and things like that, okay? But, but this, is, this is the most basic um, distinction, okay? And again, just like all things in life, whenever you're trying to even put what type, what variables are in categories, there's, there's always a question of uh, categories. Things aren't, things aren't always so clear cut in life and statistics is all about relating data and information to <coughs> real world, so things aren't always clear cut, you know. Even things like sex and gender, that's not always, uh, not always clear cut. Um, and they're, you know, that's, uh, oh, I think a lot of people's mindsets about that have changed over, over time, whereas before, you know, if you didn't fit, the defined categories, then uh, you were shunned by society, but I think now we're, uh, yeah, we're past that, yes, I'm just trying to like find the right word to say that wasn't uh, offensive, <laughs> um, but yes, so, you know, things can get really political all of a sudden, <laughs> with uh, certain discussions, okay. So that's, uh, that's your introduction uh, to data. Let me see what else I need to say about uh, uh, these variables. Okay, so when we're dealing with quantitative variables, um, there's naturally going to be numbers and we will naturally apply some uh, some sense to, uh, you'll, you'll see a lot of numbers for quantitative variables, okay? So numbers are kind of natural for quantitative variables. And, uh, <coughs> or, or 
or they, they feel natural when, uh, when you're dealing with quantitative variables. Okay? Natural. But uh, when we're dealing with categorical data, okay, we are still going to see a lot of numbers. Okay? Except these numbers um, are, are, not, are not handled the same way that we handle them for quantitative data. Okay? So the numbers over here, a lot of times we're dealing with counts, and, uh, and we're comparing counts, so we take proportions and things like that. So we still deal with numbers with categorical variables. bag of holiday M&Ms and mixed them with regular M&Ms, okay? Um, you'll see a bunch of red and green M&Ms, but you'll also see all of the other colors in there. And then if you took out a, a sample, uh, you will have, you know, red M&Ms, green, and uh, whatever. What are the colors on there? Yellow, blue, brown. brown. start talking about, you know, uh, so we've got numbers here, so these are still categorical variables, but then you could say things like 30% of the M&Ms were red. Okay. And if you just took a regular bag of M&Ms, maybe only 20% of the M&Ms are red, okay, rather than this mixture of holiday with Okay, so, all right, uh, that's that's that for uh, chapter two, and uh, we're moving right along. Okay, okay, and so, I, just just fair warning at the beginning of the class, it's gonna feel like we move fast in this class, and uh, and we do, but a lot of it is also because we're only meeting once a week. Okay, and uh, and we're gonna cover pretty much this entire book in the quarter, okay? Uh, so every week we're going to be covering about two chapters on average, and then uh, we'll get through uh, almost the entire book. Um, so. That's right. Yes. So, you, so everything you just did was categorical data? Yeah, this, was all, this is all categorical here, okay? I didn't really do anything with the quantitative data in terms of numbers yet. So we will see that uh, later today. Uh, comes from uh, the Titanic, 
okay? And uh, so Titanic passenger data. Okay, and, uh, and we've got, uh, you know, person one. So let me think of the, uh, the the columns that we have. We've got the person, and what it would we have? Uh, what we're really going to be looking at is uh, whether they survived or died. Survived or died. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to look at uh, what class of passenger they were, whether it was first class or third class, second class or a crew member, okay? And then, you know, other things that are included are things like um, adult or child, okay, uh, their sex, and things like that, okay? Uh, and this, this is all categorical data, right? Uh, we, what we've done, age is normally a quantitative data. How many years are, were you alive on this planet? But we've turned it into a categorical data. We've drawn some arbitrary line that said, if you were under 18, you're a child. If you're over 18, you're an adult, or uh, wherever that line exists. Okay, and it's, it's different in every culture. Uh, but uh, we've drawn a line and said, these are children and these are adults. Okay, and so we have, uh, you know, person one. Uh, you know, did he survive or die? Whatever. So we'll say uh, this person survived first class adult uh, male. Okay. And then, you know, let's say who do we have? We have Jack. Okay, Jack died. <laughs> he was third class adult. <laughs> survived okay first class adult female okay all right so in this case what is the who in our passenger data table person. each person each person is a who okay and and in this case the who actually makes sense in terms of being, being a person, but each each line, each person is a who. Okay. And there were a total, how many people were on that boat? Uh, Two thousand two hundred one. Okay. Two two zero one total. <coughs> So, uh, in order to uh, to create, uh, I guess, meaningful, draw meaningful information out of here, one of the first tools that we're going to use <coughs> is taking this raw data and we're going to create something called a frequency table from it. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, one thing that's lost because I'm working on the blackboard, is that this entire passenger list is huge. It'd be, you know, several stories tall because I've got 2,201 lines here, okay? Here you're only seeing the first three lines of that table. Um, but basically what we want to do is we want to go from this giant list of 2,200 people to uh, a table that's easy for us to manage, okay? And so we're going to create a frequency table, and uh, and this is exactly uh, what it sounds like. Okay. In this case, we just pick one of the variables. Okay, so we uh, pick one variable and uh, and count its frequency. Okay. So in this case. I'm going to create a frequency table for the class of passenger. So 
I've got class, and for each class I'm going to have its count. Okay, so I've got uh, first class, second class, third class, and crew. Alright, so I know I said uh, passenger, but we're going to include crew as basically people riding the boat. So I then have to go through this table of 2,201 people and I count, uh, you know, I see a first class passenger there, a first class passenger there, and I just count them up. And if I do this, I count a total of 325 first class passengers, uh, 285 second class passengers, 706 third class, and 885 crew members. Okay. So this top part is kind of like airplanes, right? Most people are in the economy and you get a few people in first class. They don't really have a second class section. Maybe the economy plus the, uh, the front seats in economy. <laughs> but can you imagine uh, an airplane where half the people on board were uh, our crew members? Okay. Be, uh, or close to half crew members? So then your airplane ticket would be really expensive. Okay, but so anyway, this is this is a frequency table, okay? And it just tells you uh, the count, and we see, oh, okay, uh, crew members, there were a lot of crew members and a lot of third class passengers and not very many first or second class passengers, things like that, okay? Um, a lot of times to make this more useful, uh, we create what we call a relative frequency table, okay? And so what we do here is we add another column, and this is called the, uh, the percent uh, in the category, okay? Or just so we see how many people total were there. We add up all of these numbers, and we see there's 2,201 people on board total. So to create the, uh, the relative frequency, uh, we just do 325 divided by 2201. I need my calculator now. So 325 divided by 2201, I get 14.8%. Uh, this for each each row in our table and this gives me uh, basically 13.0 and 32.1 and 40.2 now this should add up to a hundred percent but because of rounding issues uh, it's a tiny bit over a hundred Hundred point one percent. Okay, but this uh, this gives us uh, now a uh, a percentage for each category, and we can see rather than just seeing these raw numbers. Okay, um, you know, eight hundred eighty-five crew members is that a lot or not? Okay, on the Titanic, that's quite a bit, but you know, we're on like the uh, I don't know naval warship. You know, everybody's crew member, and you might have you know several thousand. Okay, and so, uh, you know, 885, is that a lot or a little? Uh, we see, oh, you know, it makes up 40.2% of the people on board. Yeah, that, that seems like quite a bit, especially if we're comparing it to an airplane or a bus, <laughs> one crew member. Yeah. Um, the construction of a frequency table or a relative frequency table, okay? Is this uh, 
any any questions, any issues with any of this? Okay, so one uh, natural uh, transition to go uh, once we create a relative frequency table or a frequency table, uh, a natural step might be to uh, to create a display or a chart. Okay, so charts based on this frequency table. Chart uh, for the frequency table. Frequency table. Okay, one of the uh, the most basic ones is the uh, the bar chart. choose to write percentages, whatever uh, whatever you decide. So if I decide to do the count, okay, uh, the largest number I have is 885, so a nice number that goes near that is maybe 1,000. Okay, and then so we should aim to uh, make our axes uh, relative. So 500, 6, 7, 8, 9, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So 200, 300, 400, 600. So we will, uh, we will do that. And, uh, and we'll draw some bars here. Okay, so I, I draw a bar for first class. And then I draw a bar for uh, second class. And then for third. And then for the crew. Okay, so first class I had 325, so that takes me up to about right here. And then on second class I have 285, so that's right about there. Okay, third class 706. Okay, maybe right there. And then crew members, 885, so almost 900. Something around there. Okay. So th that is my bar chart. Okay. And when I do a bar chart for categorical data, uh, I leave spaces in between the bars. Okay. It's just that. Uh, I'll just write that. Leave spaces between the bars. So this it, it's pretty natural to go from frequency table to the bar chart. I don't think I was blowing anyone's mind here. <laughs> and uh, to create uh, the relative frequency, uh, we could have created the uh, the axis um, to have been uh, the percentages rather than um, rather than the counts, and we would have ended up with basically uh, the same. Same things here. So this would be 40%, uh, and halfway down would be this is 20%, meaning this is 30, and this is 10%. And because everything we have the same exact data, um, the sizes of the bars don't aren't going to change uh, relative to each other. Okay, so. If this, if if I changed the axis here and use percentages, and somehow the bars change shapes or sizes, that would be that would be crazy. Okay, we're using the same data; it should look the same whether we're using counts or percentages, and that indeed is the fact. Uh, if we look at this, this does match up with 13 and 15 percent, or 14.8. This is indeed. Maybe I drew my line poorly, but around 32%, and that's 40%. Okay? So they're uh, a bar chart. It's a natural, natural extension of relative frequency table, or frequency table. Okay? Uh, 
Another thing, another chart that you might see that I have a particular disdain for, but, uh, <laughs> but it exists, uh, is the pie chart, okay? Now, pie charts somehow became uh, very popular with PowerPoint and things like that. Uh, you throw them in there and you get this pie on the screen. And, uh, and the, my favorite ones, or the, oh, by favorite, I mean least favorite, are the ones that look like a, a, you know, an actual pie and it's 3D or something, okay? And this is totally worthless as a, as a visual display, okay? It, it's so difficult to uh, interpret uh, what these three-dimensional pies um, mean, okay? But even their, uh, their better two-dimensional brethren uh, these are these are not that much better, okay? Because with a pie chart, if uh, if I said, uh, oh, this represents something and this represents something else, and I said, which which slice of pie is bigger? It would be really hard to tell, okay? Your eyes your eyes aren't trained for pies for, for whatever reason, okay? You can't you don't know the difference between this pie slice and that pie slice. But, you know, if you saw something very similar, and you saw this thing next to this thing, okay, these are, these are very similar, but your eyes can distinguish, oh, you know what, this one's a little bit taller than this one. There's no, no ambiguity. I like bar charts a lot more than pie charts. But basically, with pie charts, um, the percentages, you put the percentage in here, so this is what? Yeah, the whole part ch chart, rep the whole pie represents 100%, okay? Uh, this is, you know, 25% takes us to about there. This looks a little bit like half of 25%, maybe a tiny bit more. So maybe this is like 13% and this is 77% or something like that. Okay, and this one I, uh, this isn't even a circle, so it's, it's not very good. But, uh, you know, maybe this one is 12% uh, and this is 78% or something. Okay, so with pie charts, it's just the whole pie has to add up to 100%, okay? Um, if you look at, uh, if you see a pie chart where the numbers don't add up to 100%, okay, it's not a proper pie chart, okay? Oh yeah, 88%, see? I hate pie charts that much, so. Uh, yeah, 88%, thank you. Okay, now I feel dumb. No, it's fine, okay. Yes? Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's the same, so it's the same data. So in this case, if we were to, like, cut these out and stack them on top of each other, it would add up to 100%, okay? But of course, uh, I would have to make my chart this tall, and that's not a efficient use of space here, okay? But if I, if I were to cut each bar out and stack them on top of each other, they would add up to 100%. And that's basically what we have going on with the pie chart, except we decided to be cute and make wedges. But, but they exist, and, uh, and you should know how to read them, um, just because, I don't know, USA Today <laughs> likes to use pie charts and things like that. And, uh, I scoff at USA Today, no, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, who knows, maybe uh, at work you will see a PowerPoint presentation with a pie chart. And, uh, Boston take statistics, <laughs> um, but uh, oh, I erased this and I probably didn't want to, but that's okay. Um, but you will still be expected to uh, interpret a pie chart or something like that. But personally, I don't, I don't like them. All right, so that's. Uh, Frequency tables, bar charts, and that. How are we doing? Um, okay, I'm gonna do another thing before we uh, go on break here. Okay, and so the next thing that we also do with categorical data is sometimes we want to look at more than one variable at once. Okay, so with categorical data, 
uh, we can look at two variables at the same time. And, uh, and when we do that, uh, we don't create a frequency table, we create what we call a contingency table. It's, it's a s very similar to a frequency table, but we're looking at two variables at the same time. So again, categorical data. Uh, but this time, uh, two variables. create something called a contingency table. Okay. A contingency table, that name word contingency comes from because it's contingent or it's uh, based on the condition that uh, we're something, either uh, we're in some category or, or something like that. Okay, so let's say we wanted to look at uh, the class of passenger Okay, so we're going to put a class of passenger across the top this time. And then on this side, we're going to put whether they survived or died. Survival, okay? So the class of passenger, we still have first class, uh, second class, third class, and crew members. And, uh, and from before, we know that the total members in first class was uh, 325. So I'm going to put the total here. 325, uh, 285, 706, and 885. 2201 total. Okay. And, uh, and what we're doing, so this is the same as the frequency table that we had before, okay? It's just now uh, written in this form, okay? And now what separates this from the frequency table, the contingency table, is we're putting in the other variable. So we have survived. So we have those that survived and those that died. And basically we're splitting uh, we're saying these 325 first class passengers, some of them survive and some of them die. Okay? So in this case, uh, 203 survived and 122 died. And over here, uh, out of the 285 second class passengers, 118 survived and 167 died. Here, uh, 178 third class passengers survived and 528 died. And then a crew members, 212 and 673. Okay? And so for a total, total numbers, 711 survived and 1,490 died. Okay? And so this. This is called a contingency table. Because the numbers here are contingent on whether they were crew members or whether they survived or died. Okay, so each of these cells uh, squares of the table are based on, on those things. Question? Okay, um, so 178 third class passengers survived. 203 first class passengers survived. Are these numbers big or small? You know, uh, what is, how can we compare these uh, survival numbers to see, you know, what's, what was going on on this ship, okay? So beyond this, uh, one thing that we might want to do is create either column percentages or row percentages, okay? And, uh, and I will uh, get into all of this, column percentages, row percentages, and also uh, table percentages. But uh, you know what, let's, uh, why don't we take a break and then uh, uh, we'll come back and uh, resume.